That is the handiwork of possession. That's the handiwork of darkness. That is a measure of how there is such a curious archetypal shift. A, a, an extraordinary handiwork that our archetypes that mu once represented the immortality, the journey of the soul, we now have shifted so that the focus for us is that we want our bodies to be immortal. We do not want our bodies to age. We can't bear the thought of aging. And this is really important. We don't want our bodies to age. We want to deny how old we are. We have all kinds of te techniques to make sure nobody knows that we are aging in any way. But we want our health products to make sure we're healthy for a long time. And it's our body, and we want health to be all about making sure our body does not break down because it must be immortal. So it's the task of, of moving immortality into the body. Never aging. And not dealing anymore with what the journey of the soul is. I have never once in my whole career had anyone ask me, what happens after I die? Do I have a life review? I have never once had anyone do that, but they're great about karma. Do my choices matter to where I'm going from here? Do they matter? But it's okay to talk about karma, to make up where you've lived but not to talk about what comes next. Okay, and all of this I have to, I, I say to you, because when you're dealing with your own healing, when you're dealing, you have to have a whole portrait. You can't cherry pick the parts of, the, of spirituality or the parts that, that appeal to you. You can't say, I only want the good. I only want to deal with past life, but I don't want to deal with the possibility that I might die. I only want to deal with the idea that if I'm a good person, bad things won't happen. I only want to deal, I only want the world to be the way I want it to be. That's not the way the universe works. This is a universe that simply has laws. The laws operate on shadow and light, good and, and evil, choice and consequence. And it includes what, Every, the, the, the workings of darkness as well as the workings of light. You simply learn the rules. And you learn that you're, you are designed to sense when you are flowing into darkness. And the journey, the whole structure of your intuitive system is to say, I'm crossing the wire here, your conscience. I've just made a bad choice. Now why have I done it? And that's your spiritual life. Why have I done this? And prayer is about getting grace in and saying, help me not to do this again because that was pretty stupid. And that the choices you make are not because of your history. They're because of, what you wanted, because of who you are today. It really is summed up just like that. But what I have learned is our healing, why we get sick, everything, how we, the collective is all connected to this as well, that we don't exist separate from this whole. And when I finally realized that even the study of archetypes, as essential as they are, and they are, they didn't hold the key to healing, that's when the passage to your soul opens. That's when I had that Teresa of Avila experience. I don't have to relive that. A lot of you know that. I'm not going to bother going into all that. I'm just going to fast forward and say that the mystical level, the level of mystery, that's when I learned the laws. That even the mystics, if, and their work is where we're going uh, so much of this. Is that if you look at the work of all the great mystics from Buddha to, to but especially in the Christian, because them, 
I lean on them so heavily. But what they have in common, whether they're Francis or John of the Cross, Teresa of Avila, Ignatius Loyola, any of them, once they get into the high altitudes, none of them tell you you have to be a Catholic or a Christian. They start floating into cosmic territory. Once you cross over tribal lines and become involved in law, the nature of God, the nature of yourself, you cease to wonder where, who's what. It's no, because these, those are the rules that divide people. You stop focusing on what divides people and makes you better than someone. And you start looking on what makes you the same. Instead of what makes you different, you start looking at what makes me just like everybody because it, it's what makes you just like where you find the truth. If you focus on what makes me better or different, you are following an illusion. Got it? Okay. Um, I just want to make sure I wanted to say something. I, you know, I, in this last reference I'm going to make, but when I was talking about the new, the way our psyche is now because of um, the, for numbers of reasons, but this, what I call nuclear consciousness, we now operate like a global psyche. I want you to think about you standing in, remember the latitude and longitude things you had as a kid, latitude, longitude, the way the world was? Here, this is my last drawing. These are the only ones I do now, here. <laughs> this is a lot easier. Here, here you are, okay? That's it. This is where you live now. You live in the middle of a globe, Latitude and longitude are now electrical circuitries. They are now a communication system for you where you are constantly picking up the collective, oops, the collective circuits from everybody. This is the, the circuitry of the internet. You pick it up and what's on this internet, what's on the grid here, are all the collective, the, the psychic free radicals that communicate epidemics and epidemic thought, epidemic diseased thought, the kinds of thought forms that make epidemics and weaken the collective immune system and therefore weaken your immune system are thought forms that build up prejudice in tribe or make you feel like your tribe's weakened in any way. Which is why the US is at, in so much trouble right now. Okay, so those kinds of thought forms. And what that does is it creates a kind of madness. And the way it manifests is the tribe becomes more brutal. So one of the archetypes that you see resurrecting now is the barbarian. The barbarian. It's, it has been animated again in a big way. It's the worst of the tribe. The worst. The, tr the barbarian has been, and I, I you know, see all of, the, all of these cross points here? like that, where, where latitude and longitude cross. I want you to imagine that those are archetypes and they get animated. They get so like the archetype of the king and the queen and the princess are getting turned off now. Their era is over. So, you, you, so just think that they're like, like winding down, which means that, they're, that the magnetics of that archetypal pattern 
are being withdrawn from the evolutionary patterns of, of, of Earth. It's not essential anymore. So as, as the years go by, it, 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 little girls won't think of themselves as princesses and they won't be looking for knights and knights won't be looking for princesses. It's, you could see that it's getting worked out of our collective. Just getting worked out little by little by little. But what's getting, sometimes archetypes get rebooted, reworked, reanimated. And one of the ones that has gotten reanimated is the barbarian. And that has, you know, come of age. Another one that's gotten rebooted is the magician, like Harry Potter. So there's a, there's a, a number of these archetypes that have just gotten rebooted for our time. Now, the next, well, I'm going to go a different direction. I would like to um, talk about, uh, ask you if you would in your own uh, make note of where you yourself feel balanced or imbalanced in your life. Where do you see yourself as out of balance? 